If you want to enhance your routing protocol authentication, you can utilize keychains. Now, how does this enhance your routing protocol authentication? Well, it enhances it because you are increasing the layers of security by allowing your devices to use different keys. What do I mean by using different keys? Well, in January, we might use a certain key. In February, we use a different key. In March, a completely different key. So we can rotate through these keys so we're never using the same key for more than so many days or so many months. As a result, if someone did capture our key, then next month we're no longer using that key anyway. So this really goes hand in hand with our hash authentication or hashing authentication. And why is that? Because since we're not sending the key itself, we're sending the hash, if the hash is captured, by the time they break or reverse engineer that hash, we'd be on to using a different key anyways, and as a result, we'd have a completely different hash. So it's like changing your passwords. But now we're allowing it to happen dynamically. We set up different keys inside the key chain, and then we set lifetimes for those keys. When we can accept the keys, when we can send the keys, and as a result, we're saying, January, use this one. February, we're no longer using this one. We're going to use this one. Or I'm only going to accept this particular key from this particular neighbor at this particular time. So this frequent changing of keys ensures that we have a higher level of security with routing protocol authentication. However, you might be thinking, well, how does that affect our neighborships? How does that affect our routing updates? Well, if you do it properly, the transition should be seamless between these keys. It shouldn't affect neighborships. It shouldn't affect routing updates. The transition should just happen nice and smoothly, and we shouldn't see any change in the environment when that change of keys happens. So what is a keychain? What is a keychain? It says here, a keychain is a set of keys associated with an interface. Okay, so we're going to assign the keychain to an interface. And then inside that keychain, it's going to identify keys that can be utilized for that authentication process. And then inside these keys, we find the key strings, we find the key lifetimes, we find the information that is necessary in order to perform the authentication. So what is this keychain? What is the keys? Where are the key strings? Let me give you a visual representation of it right here. There's a keychain with a whole bunch of keychain, uh, a keychain with a whole bunch of keys. Let me repeat that. That's a keychain right there with a whole bunch of keys. And these keys have teeth, your key strings. If I want to unlock my studio, I need to use this key. And these teeth on this key, the key string, are designed to unlock that door specifically. So if I want my friend to come in after hours to my studio and use my equipment, they would need a key with the same type of teeth in order to unlock that door. But do they need the same key chain? No, of course not. They can have a completely different key chain. But the keys have to match. Same thing is true with their routing protocols. I can use different key chains on different routers. It doesn't matter. The keychain is locally significant. However, the keys are going to have to match. For example, if I'm using key one to perform authentication, then the other router must be using key one to perform authentication as well. If my key has a certain key string in it, let's say the key string is Cisco, then that neighboring router is that same key. Key one would have to have the same key string of Cisco. So key chains don't have to match, but the key itself and the ID of that key, along with the key string inside of that key, are going to have to match between neighboring routers in order to successfully perform authentication. So how does the process work? Well, when we are sending uh, a packet or trying to form a neighbor adjacency, the very first valid key, the, one that, uh, the very first one that's active in a list. So if we have 10 keys identified, we go down through them. Oh, one's not valid, two's not valid, three's not valid. Oh, four's valid. Okay, we're going to use four. 
So top-down processing, immediate execution upon a match, we use key 4 in order to generate our hash. On the other side, though, with the incoming packets, the incoming packets are going to be checked against all valid keys. So the router on the other side receives the packet, it looks at it and says, all right, let's go through my keys. Let's see what's valid. This is valid, this is valid, this is valid, okay. Well, it has to come up with a hash that matches. The only way it's going to come up with a hash that matches is if it's using the information in key 4 as well. Because the key ID has to match and the key string has to match because both the ID and the string are going to be utilized during the process of creating the hash that's going to be sent.